Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paula's Soapbox Live. You know my guest today for his role on Passions as Ethan Winthrop. You also obviously know him as Brady Black on Days of Our Lives. And he's here today to talk about his band, Counterpoint, which just released an album in November. I am so excited to welcome to the show Emmy-winning actor Eric Martzolf. Well, hi. Hi. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Thank you for coming on. <laughs> do you like my hat? I do. Oh, my goodness. I do like your hat. That's very nice. Your, I, um, your fans from Passions are going to be very happy to see that. I was going to I was going to say, yeah, I dusted this old thing off. I found it in the closet somewhere. But honestly, this is probably one of my favorite hats. This is my go to hat when I'm just hanging around and you know, yeah. washing the car <laughs> or something like that. I put on this. It's my it's very comfortable. I, I like it very much. It looks comfortable. It's a it's a nice looking hat. It, it just happens to say passions on it, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. So uh, you were actually the first actor from Days of Our Lives to get the Emmy for Best Supporting Actor. That must have been kind of surreal. Yeah, I, I actually didn't realize that when when I, you know, when it happened, when it happened, I had no idea yeah. it was actually it was actually a fan. And I, I wish I had paid more attention as to who it was. But someone tweeted a comment and said, I don't know if you realize this, Eric, but you're the only one to ever win supporting actor in, in Days of Our Lives history. And I went back to my cast and said, that can't be true. Come on. It's yeah. been 50 at the time, 52 years. Somebody had to have gotten it. <laughs> yeah. No, apparently no one ever did. So I, 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 yeah, I found that, I found that a little disturbing because you know I've always looked at soap operas as, as a supporting, just a supporting element in general. I, I don't believe in lead mm. actors and lead actresses. To me, it's a team. Sport. It's an ensemble. It's always been an ensemble. I don't, I don't care how mm. much airtime you have. I don't care mm. how good your wardrobe looks over others. It just, I just think it's a team sport no matter what. And we should all support each other. So getting the supporting nomination and eventually win was important to me in my mindset and my philosophy towards daytime. You know? Yeah. That was cool. So, so where do you keep your Amy? It's over there. I <laughs> it's over there somewhere. It's, it's, it's actually moved around the house a little bit. Um, yeah. At the time that I won it, it was just a matter of keeping it up high so my boys wouldn't use it as a weapon on each other. Yeah. Because <laughs> Emmy's wings are very sharp. Yeah. You know, and uh, they, they they can stab a young child easily. So <laughs> yeah. I had to keep it up very high. But now they're more mature and they understand they're not supposed to play with it. So it's 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 over there in the corner on a nice little drawer. Yeah. I'll take you there, you know, eventually yeah. in the if you want me to move. Yeah, well, it's it's up to you. I mean, I think everyone would love to see it, but you know, if it's gonna like be a problem, then don't worry about <laughs> it's it. It's actually no big deal. It's like a, it's it's a woman made of brass holding. A woman, right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, you've seen pictures of them. I've seen pictures and video and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no big secret. It's not like a holy grail or something that nobody's <laughs> right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So, is it true that you got the role of Brady Black? Um, by auditioning for the part of Rafe Hernandez. I mean, I knew you didn't know it was Rafe at the time, but yeah, if I if I knew the role was Rafe Hernandez, I probably wouldn't have shown up. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I don't think this blue-eyed Swedish German dude is gonna pull off Rafe Hernandez. Yeah, <laughs> in, in any world, in any time. But no, it's true. Uh, I knew that I was auditioning for Allison Sweeney's new love interest. Yeah, and that's all we knew. We didn't have a name. Obviously, the character had a name in the script, but. Um, I did a screen test with Allie and it was a fictitious scene where in which I was helping her deliver a baby at a, at a time of crisis, she was going to deliver a baby. And, you know, and I was her, you know, lover. And I was holding her hand in her head in my hands. I'm like, it's going to be okay, baby. It's going to be okay. And, which in retrospect is really kind of weird now that she's my, you know, sister. Yeah. <laughs> so, and to this day, I, I don't really think that this was, this was planned by the producers. They, they obviously gave the role to, to Galen Gehring. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were like six other guys in the mix. And I got a call, I think it was a week, maybe a week or two later, um, that I that, uh, was brought in. And they said, uh, we were thinking about bringing Brady Black back to the canvas. And mm -hmm. uh, 
would you be interested? And I guess yeah. it was it, it was off of that audition. I guess maybe I came across more as Allie's brother than her lover. <laughs> maybe that's why. Like, we, don't, we don't see these guys being well, into this. But... There's no chemistry there, so. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, it's chemistry. It's just not. Not lovey, the lovey. right kind it's of chemistry. <laughs> like, I want to see these two related. I think yeah. they be related. And, and it's funny because Allie and I, we actually have a heck of a lot in common. Yeah. As far as what we enjoy with movies and music and humor and laughter. She's, she's a big goofball just like me. Yeah. Uh, deep down. So they must have seen something. Because I, 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 once I got to know Allie, I understood that it was a, it was a good match. Yeah. I would have put us together too. S- similar personality, so. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're just kind of weird. So we're, how long? Not, had... we're, Go we're ahead. Just silly, we're just silly, you know. I mean, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of actors, and I'm sure you've probably spoken to a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they take themselves very seriously. Yeah, some of them and, do. <laughs> and that's and that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day. Um, I don't think you can sweat the small stuff in our, in, in our business, you know, with rejection and with, and how hard it is, you really have to learn to laugh off, um, the tough stuff. And that's hard sometimes. And I think the people who have proliferated in our industry, especially in daytime, as hard as, and as quick as it is, I think the people that, that thrive are the ones that know how to do that, that can go, all right. All right, that okay. Th- those scenes were kind of crappy. I could have done them better, but tomorrow's another day. I'm not going to be yeah. hard on myself, and I'm going to get back up on the horse and do better tomorrow because you're only as good as your last scene, right? Yeah. Well, you have to do that in life anyway. I mean, right? if you sweat every small thing, you drive yourself nuts. So sure. that's, not, <laughs> it, that's not just a Hollywood application. It's for every, right. It's everyone yeah. in every aspect of life, of course. Yeah. So how long had you been uh, off of Passions uh, when you got the part on Days? It was about seven months, seven months of agony. Yeah. I, I remember those months. Uh, they were very hard because my, we had just, I had just bought a new house. <laughs> and my boys were, I don't know, I've been on Days for almost, oh yeah, almost 10 years. So they were, they were like two. I mean, yeah. they, were ba- they were babies. They were little infants. And yeah. here so I you're crossed, freaking out. I was freaking out, as yeah. most actors do when they lose their bread and butter gig, you know? Yeah. And I was no exception. So that was a blessing. That was one of those moments. I didn't tell my wife that I had been called in um, for this meeting about Brady. Yeah. And at that meeting, I accepted the role. I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, sure. Kind and of I a went, no-brainer, though. I mean... <laughs> uh, I, I I went home and Lisa uh, Lisa was in the kitchen. I remember I, I put on the whole thing. I was like, oh, it's like where where were you? I'm like, I just found out I didn't I didn't get the I didn't get the job. The the Ray Fernandez <laughs> Ray Fernandez. She's like, oh God, well, why did you even go in if it was for Ray? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I just screw. I just I just didn't get it. And she's like, well, don't worry, you'll get something else. I'm like, well, I already did. I got Brady Black instead. It's yeah. like, what show is he on? I'm like, the same show. He's on. <laughs> what show is he on? Yeah, who's that? <laughs> and uh, and so that was that. It was it was a big, big, teary moment for both of us because we were both yeah. scared. We were both scared, right. and yeah. it came it came at just the right time. It was a blessing. Yeah. Well, I'll and just and... be thankful to to Days of Our Lives for giving me that, throwing me that life net at the time. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure your your wife had a deeper understanding of what you were going through because she was a performer too. So, very good point. She 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 knew and was very aware of the ups and downs of our industry. Yeah, and what we risk being in this industry. One right. minute you're up, one minute you're down, and so yeah, she knew what was on the table. Absolutely. Well, so you got the screen test for Passions because you were the only one that could pronounce the word precedent. <laughs> wow. Did, did, how did you know about that? Oh, I did my research. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> well, that's, that is, a, it, it is a story as to whether that was the one thing. Right. That got me there. It didn't yeah. hurt. All I know is that the casting director of Passions at the time, Jackie Brisky, she did stop me in the middle of my monologue when I was auditioning. Yeah. And she, and she just thanked me. You know, <laughs> 
and with a big smile on her face. She's like, I just want to thank you for pronouncing that word correctly. And I'm like, which, which word? She's like, precedent. I'm like, that, yeah. that's, that's been a precedent. She's like, you have no idea what's been coming in here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and these, these dudes that have just been coming in here going, well, the precedent and the precedent and the precedent, I mean, just everything other than precedent. And that's when I told her, you know, I said, well, I do have a, you know, I, I have a pre-law degree. I went to school for political science and majored in, in that area. So I, yeah. I heard the word before. Right, yeah. Not that you need a pre-law degree. To <laughs> right, I was going to say, word. I don't have a pre-law degree. I don't have a law degree. I, I know the know, word. I know how to pronounce it. <laughs> but, when, but when they talk about the craziness of Hollywood, that's just one small instance of how a single thing like that can turn the tide. Yeah. And that, that, I mean, she did. I remember she kind of had a laugh and I had a laugh. And I almost felt that interaction with yeah. her was my audition. Yeah. More so than the words. You got to say, these casting directors, they hear these same words in this dialogue over Rock. these audition scenes over and over again. Yeah. Anything you can to make it a little more colorful, to make you stand out. Right. It's always appreciated. You always got to take a risk somewhere in there. And that was the moment outside of the box. We started laughing. I'm like, well, you know, I didn't become a lawyer. My dad wasted like 60 grand on my education. <laughs> yeah. here, I am, here I am saying the word right for you. So I did something right today. Right. <laughs> and that's when she kind of looked and stepped back. And she looked at the, the assistant casting director and looked back at me. And she said, I think we're going to test you. Yeah. You know, yeah. in the middle of the month. So I don't know. Life is funny that way. It it didn't hurt any that you knew how to pronounce that word. And I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall to see what other <laughs> variations like, of that word. A montage of that, just like right. a bunch of really handsome guys <laughs> walking in the room going, Procurator, you know, pursuit. Right. <laughs> I, I would watch that. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> well, so a lot of soap stars have had unusual fan encounters. And I read that when you were on Passions, someone in a grocery store threw an avocado at you. This is this is true. <laughs> this is true. It's not like she threw it like you know a major league pitcher, but she did kind of <laughs> tossed it at you. She, and, but on the other hand, she didn't exactly lob it. It was more like a you know the way you would throw a piece of fruit at your brother if he was making you mad or something. You just say, hey, yeah, and it came at me, and I was like, what the? What is... <laughs> that's I'm sure you're aware of the story. For those that don't know, yeah, she was mad at me. She was mad at my character, Ethan, mm -hmm. for what I was doing to Gwen. <laughs> like the entire run of passions, by the way, which was basically lying to Gwen be and holding my feelings in for Teresa. Right. But that was the story. <laughs> I mean, that was the whole thing. And they, they invested in that storyline the whole show. Right. Which you don't see anymore. These no. days you're lucky if a, if a pairing lasts six months. Right. Let alone, you know, 10 years. So she was upset. And she really couldn't understand that I was actually just a guy named Eric. She believed yeah. that Ethan was in there grocery shopping. That that happens. <laughs> I've heard stories that happens. I'm like, I'm like, girl, look at my jeans and t-shirt. Ethan would never be wearing this. <laughs> right. He's like Armani suits. He, he wears a tux to the bathroom. Ethan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> that happened. Was, was that your most unusual fan encounter, or have you had worse? I've had a few, but that one sticks out. Yeah. You know, be hitting be hit in, in the neck with an avocado. That's just, <laughs> you don't think of you don't think that that's gonna happen. Uh, no, but you had to think. Okay, well, I've made it now. Somebody's recognized me in the store and has thrown uh, an avocado at me because yeah. of my storyline. So well, I really, look, I really, I love avocados. I like open up an avocado and just right. that out and put it on anything. So. You know, if, if, if you're out there, if people are out there and they like the show, you throw an avocado at me. I'll right. gladly. <laughs> if, you're, if you're happy with Brady or you don't like Brady, whatever the case may be, just throw him yeah. an avocado. Show your affection by throwing <laughs> avocados at me. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you used to watch uh, Young and the Restless with your mom growing up, right? I did. She made me watch. Yeah. Yes. So you must have a, a an appreciation for how generational the soap opera fan base is partly at least because of that. I do. I do. I it's, it's, we would be nothing without that generational power. Actually. I think that's the one thing that sets our shows aside from any other program on television. The fact yeah. that if you're a kid or I mean, if you're a kid, if you're younger and you're struggling to have conversations with your grandmother or you, even one of your parents or you know, 
you can always talk soaps with mm -hmm. with 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 the generations that have come before you because the characters have, have you know surpassed time i mean i'm able to i was able to speak with my my grandmother and my grandfather about you know the stories they called them stories yeah uh and it was nice because they, they they weren't the types of people that actually would actually open up too much but you start talking you know days of our lives or any of the soaps with them and it's like ah and common yeah. ground it's common ground which is important these days it, it's it's a beautiful icebreaker sometimes just to be able to get to know someone you know you watch days yeah. i watch days too oh my god and then the and then you start talking up. yeah and all of a sudden you formulated a relationship or a friendship and I see it happen at these fan events all the time yeah. uh, where people, sure, they come to see us too, but they use it as a reason to, to come together to, to uh, you know, extend the relationship and the friendship that they have because of their common interest. Yeah. So it brings people together, which is great. Yeah. Do you remember when Days used to have the, um, the, the nighttime special programs where they would have like the... Uh, they would have a special episode that would air at night, and it was like a longer episode. It was almost like a mini movie. I've heard about these, but I've never seen one. Yeah. I remember growing up, I'm dating myself a little bit. I remember growing up watching those, and like the whole family would get together and watch those at night. Would, would they um, be like mini movies? They, they seemed, from what I remember, they were like mini movies. Um, I want to say they were longer than like the hour long episode. Um, did they have a beginning and a middle and an end? Did they, did it, it kind of picked up the storyline from the daytime, but it was like what you would think of during Sweeps Week, that kind of thing, where it was like a this big epic event would happen. Oh, kind of like so, kind of like kind of like the TV movies back in the like eighties and nineties. Yeah, kind of like that. I, I wonder actually if I can find those on YouTube or something. Surely somebody has saved those yeah, over the years. Watch, I'd love to watch one. I just saw a clip. Uh, yesterday of John saying goodbye to little Brady, little me, uh, yeah. because he was going, he was about to be executed or whatever. He was saying bye to Bell and Brady. Yeah. So I got to see myself as a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Look totally different than you remember it, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, our, our noses are a little different, but you know. Yeah. Right. I bought it. Well, let's talk about Dollywood. Because Dollywood. I live in Tennessee, we have to talk about Dollywood. Now, what city are you in? I am in a town called Monterey. So I am, like, almost exactly between Knoxville and Nashville. Got it. Okay. So I'm, like, a, I'm like an hour and a half between each one of them. So Dollywood's not far. How, lo how many times have you been to Dollywood in your life? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> I, couldn't, that many, huh? I couldn't even count, like, my whole childhood. I was at Dollywood every single summer. Um, did, you see went, do, did you see me do a show? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's possible that I could I was, have. Well, I was there for three years. I, I think I think it was 95 to 98, I want to say, or maybe 94 to 97, around there. It's very possible that I could have. Um, I went a couple of years ago to see, uh, actually, Holly Norman, who you performed with. Uh, she and I became friends. Yeah, I've interviewed her. She and I became friends through that. So I went a couple of years ago to see her perform um, for like the Bluegrass Festival thing. Yeah. And that was the first time I had been there since I was probably since probably when I was a teenager. So it was it was kind of a trip to to go and, and see Great. everything again. I well, I was there with Greg Vaughn a couple what, maybe two years ago. We did a fan yeah. event down there, a quick fan event. And it was kind of like a nostalgic walk down right. the lane for me. Yeah, and, uh, we we did the Q and A on the very stage that I performed uh, the uh, what is it uh, the rock and roll show whatever oh, what was it called uh, I don't know the the rock show the, the, the 50s yeah rock show that yeah was, <laughs> it was it was just great it was it was a terrific terrific time in my life and I uh, I loved the people down there I was only supposed to be there for three months just do a quick wow. Christmas show they wanted me to be the moderator for the Christmas show or the, yeah. or the host of it. And I would just talk about what's going on in the Smokies. And, and before I knew it, you know, a couple of months later, I'm in a leather jacket, you know, with Dolly Parton in the celebrity theater, like right. Yeah. 
interesting and put your head on my shoulder and Dolly's got her head on my shoulder. I'm like, what life am I living right now? Right. Whose who's life do I have right now? <laughs> do I really have the queen of country sitting on my shoulder? Right. It was, it was so great. It was so great. So did, so did you get recruited at a, at a hotel lobby to do this? Was yes. that how that happened? Yeah. Yeah. There was a, uh, I, I, just a random kind of occurrence where in which I, you know, I, I, I got to talking, met some of her people and uh, one, of, one of the producers of, of Dollywood of, of the, of the shows. And it was just instant. I was just so taken back by the, by the, uh, not, not just the offer, but they, they just, they just looked at me and believed in me. They're like, we know you can do this. We know <laughs> you can do it. we, we want you and you're, it's, you should just sign this contract. We're, we're going to have a hell of a good time. It's going to be great. <laughs> I can't think of a reason why not to do this. You look so <laughs> lovely. Like, is this all salesmanship or are you all really this friendly down south? And like, yeah. I don't know. You make up your mind for yourself. And I, I, I fell in love with the mountains and the people. And yeah. I, I stayed for three years, three months, turned in three years. So had you ever been to like Tennessee or Dollywood or anything before no. that? Yeah. I, I was going to say. Know, I, I remember this was before the internet as well. I think it was before. Right. The, yeah. It, yeah so it was before like the internet. Just, it's not. <laughs> All I had to go on was a brochure. Oh gosh! <laughs> like a freaking brochure with a picture of it was a it was a it was a a clip from Christmas in the Smokies, and it was just a clip from the end of the show where everyone's in the gowns singing uh, "What Music I Hear in Your Name," and it was the big musical number. And it was just spotlights and smoke and people in robes and singing. And I'm like, this this looks serious. Like this is a show, right? Yeah. And I'm like. <laughs> this might be fun. I think I might like it because at the time as well, I had been in the uh, the choirs at, at in college, and I had a fondness mm -hmm. for for classical music and spiritual music as well, and and music that really moved me. And what they yeah. spoke about at Dollywood was was how important music was in that town, not only in the park, but uh, the town itself. It, it mm -hmm. was all about you know the music. That's what made the theme park what it was. Yeah. And anywhere you went, I don't care if you're going to get a hot dog or going to a show or going to on a roller coaster, you're going to hear, you're going to hear music. You're going to hear yeah. that beat. And uh, that was I part of that. the whole atmosphere of Dollywood was yeah. the music around the park. Built on the music. And yeah. The and I just, I just, I thought it was terrific. So that, yeah. was a, that was an interesting part of my life. So did your, your castmates, they kind of convinced you to set out and do Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, right? That was the only thing that could take me away from Dollywood. Yeah. yeah. It was a buddy of mine that I'd worked with at Hershey Park, and he was doing Grease with uh, the Troika organization, and they were putting up a Joseph and the Dreamcoat show, and they were having trouble finding a pharaoh. Yeah. And, and I had sung a bunch of Elvis stuff and rock and roll stuff at Hershey Park, and Juan Bentonker was his name, a great, good friend, I uh, really had my back, and he told the producers, he said, I think I have your pharaoh. He's in Dollywood right now. Why don't you give him a call? And next thing you knew it, I was flying to Rockville, Maryland, found myself in a room singing the song that I'd learned on the plane, the song of the king from Joseph, literally learned it on the plane. Oh, wow. I'm sitting there like in, you know, row 24A, like, <laughs> and trying not to do it loudly. because <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> And I, and I, they, they hired me and that yeah. proceeded to be another three, almost three and a half years of my life with, with Osmonds and Debbie Gibson and Patrick Cassidy and Jody Benson, the little mermaid, and not to mention my wife as well. I was going to say, I, that's how you met your wife. I met my wife on that tour. You know, she was just one of a plethora of just beautiful, interesting people that I got to work with while I was out there doing that. And uh, yeah, I took her home with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we actually, we went to L.A. together. That's, that's how we got there. The tour ended. Yeah. If you notice, and my career is interesting, I don't quit jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem with commitment. I kind of stay, I just stay committed. I don't quit anything. It has to end. Right. And then it has, somebody has to like, yeah. <laughs> cut you loose. <laughs> Someone has to kick my ass out of the building <laughs> for me to like leave. Yeah. <laughs> and so the Joseph tour did in fact end. Yeah. And uh, we moved to LA together. Yeah. Nice, nice souvenir from Joseph. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Most people keep a piece of costume or something. I, I, I you got a waft. <laughs> I got a girl. <laughs> so I read somewhere or heard somewhere that you had broken into a radio station and created a demo tape at some point in your career. Do you know who helped me break into that? It was a television station. Do you know it was a television me? station? No. It was John Osef, the drummer of oh, Counterpoint, who you've been Did not know that. To. I've been talking to him. He is not the one that told me that. So <laughs> I, I I knew John had he was working down in a television station. Uh, I forget the capacity or the context which he was worth, but in Florida. Yeah. And I contacted him and said, I think I want to be an on air guy. I think I want to be a newscaster. Yeah. Like, really? I'm like, yeah, I think I want, I want to be behind the desk and, and do the news and re I can read teleprompters. I think that's where my talent lies. And I want, I, but I need a demo tape. And he's like, I know where we're going to do it. <laughs> Flew down to Florida, met him. And we literally, I don't want to say broke into, but you just, yeah, <laughs> we, it was after hours and we kind of made our way in. Yeah. We got behind the camera and we created a demo tape of myself doing a sports clip a news clip and I think I think I did weather as well I don't know yeah but that, that's out there somewhere I gotta find that yeah <laughs> well it's, it's interesting that John left that out of like the history for counterpoint <laughs> yeah <laughs> he didn't I, include that <laughs> that's an important uh <laughs> an important thing I think you should have mentioned that Darn yeah, it. Maybe, maybe, maybe he just didn't want to get in trouble for breaking into the maybe but you didn't technically break in so <laughs> right. You just had the combination or something. Right. Yeah. So on that note, let's talk about Counterpoint. Um, so this was a band that you helped form in 1989 when you were in high school. Yes. This was, uh, this was basically formulated out of John and I uh, goofing around in my basement where I had a drum set. I had a little Casio keyboard. And what we would do is we would t take songs current pop songs and we would add our own lyrics and our own flair to it sometimes it was you know not appropriate for you know all audiences <laughs> uh, yeah. and we would we would do parodies of songs like we did yeah. you know we'd, like uh the devil inside from in excess we did shovel inside which was about you know here comes the gardener with a look in his eye you know, he's, <laughs> so, yeah, he's got a shovel inside shovel it and then we did we did Debbie Gibson's uh, uh, Out of the Blue. We did oh, freaking, yeah. freaking Cashew. Yeah. Now it's you, freaking Cashew. Your mom's <laughs> a walnut. Your dad's a pistachio. You know, we, <laughs> thought it, we thought it was funny. And, of course, my mom is like, what are you guys doing? Right. <laughs> like, uh, and that's how we lived. But then we started doing our own music instead yeah. of, like, why are we sing along to the tracks? Why don't we do it on the keyboard and he was a drummer and I was a drummer and all of a sudden we realized that we were kind of making some music and yeah you know that just that just led to us calling some other boys from the high school and uh we knew a bass player we knew a guitar player and I was in several bands before counterpoint actually and I, I spent most of my high school and junior high dances actually performing the music as opposed to like you know dancing with the girls right I yeah. was uh, you know but um yeah, Counterpoint was basically just formed from a bunch of guys in high school. We called ourselves a couple guys in the basement. That's what our initial name was when John and I were doing yeah. our little parodies. And Counterpoint came about because it was just all these different musical influences creating this Counterpoint. Because we were, we weren't, we, we didn't know how to classify ourselves. We, we were very keyboard heavy, but then we were guitar heavy. And, and I didn't really look like a rock and roll guy because I like wore polo shirts and I was kind of... <laughs> You know, and then the keyboardist would look like he just got out of jail, you know. And <laughs> so we all had these very different, you know, vibes going on. Yeah. So we, we came up with Counterpoint. And, uh, yeah, it's been a long time since we got together. But John called me up uh, last year and he said, listen, the boys and I, we, we've been doing some stuff. And would you be interested in flying out to L.A. and throwing your vocals on some of these and just just for the nostalgia of it, I said, you had yeah. to, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, are we going to win any Grammys? No. Is this, <laughs> is this the greatest music ever conceived of and put on Spotify? No, but <laughs> it is us yeah. and it's no frills. It's just, it's the music that we 
grew up listening to and that kind of that sound it's it's uh it's not for everyone but it's yeah. fun it's fun rock and roll that we remember listening to when we were growing up and it's kind of a throwback to that yeah and there's no there's there's no auto tuning there's no highly computerized effects it's just a bunch of guys jamming out recording it and saying here you know and yeah. it's raw it's raw that way but it's it's it was fun it was so fun i was I gonna the, say the music is almost secondary to just getting together and, and doing it yeah you know? yeah i was gonna ask you how what that was like after all those years to come back and and do uh, that again it was it was super it was like it was coming home you know I was yeah kind of going back to pennsylvania and i hadn't seen jim and john uh i mean i'm sorry i had seen john but i hadn't seen jim and ron the, the guitar players for 20 years oh wow so yeah it's been a long long time yeah it was a long time coming and you know in blues brothers fashion we're like we're getting the band back together yeah <laughs> you know? and then and, and we did just just for just for a couple tracks I, I only had two days i we i i did seven songs in like eight hours like my oh. i was i was i was horses can be i was just screaming my brains out yeah but um, it was fun. It was fun. So your first single is called In Your Head. So what can yeah. you tell us about that song? It's all about getting in uh, someone's head, not letting them, not letting them get out. It's, it's basically, it's, it's pretty simplistic. And, you know, it's just, uh, we, I, what it reminded me of is in high school when yeah. you had that crush. Mm-hmm. And you just couldn't get her out of your head. And you wanted to because it was so distracting. <laughs> in, in between classes, you'd be looking for her instead of like studying. Or you'd, or you'd be in class and kind of looking at her instead of paying attention to the teacher. But I can't stop looking at her. Why can't I stop looking at her? She doesn't yeah. like her. not interested in me. I know she likes that other guy. I shouldn't even be looking at her. Yeah. <laughs> She's in my head. And uh, I think of all the tracks, that's my favorite one because it, it – it's very in excess uh, sounding and it's, it's just, it's just fun. It's just poppy. And yeah. it's about, uh, it's about not being able to get someone out of your head. I think everybody can relate. Everybody can relate to that. There's always someone. It's a, there's always, yeah, there's always someone. <laughs> get out, get out. You know? <laughs> so are there any plans to do like a music video or anything? <laughs> that would be, to. that would be fun. Oh my God. You're right. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Maybe. Yeah, you want to direct it? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe we'll <laughs> I do have, it down in Tennessee. Right, yeah, at Dollywood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll have to talk to John about that. But we, I we, think we, that would be awesome. We haven't talked about that. I think you're right. I think yeah. we should do that. All right, I'll put that in my yeah in my head. Yeah, in your head. <laughs> yeah, video. Maybe I could call up Tonic Contain and we could like do a parody of the White Snake video. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do know what you're talking you about. Do? Yes, I do. Yeah. Remember Tawny on the yep. on the white jaguar? Um, yep. oh. <laughs> hey, Tawny, if you see this, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. That would be awesome. I know. White, white Snake was like my was my second concert that I ever went to, and I'll really never forget it. I'll never forget it. <laughs> David Coverdale, I loved it. Loved it. So are you guys going to record again in a couple of years? Hopefully it's not a couple. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it's not that long. I mean, uh, I kind of feel like this is something we should probably do on an annual basis. Yeah. You know, why yeah. not? You know, I, I, you know, days of our lives gives me about, we, we get about 19 or 20 weeks off a year. Yeah. And uh, so there's, there is time to fly back and I, I get a bonus. I get to see my family too. Cause my parents are still, yeah, you know, they're, they're in Pennsylvania. Because maybe I should make the boys come out here this time. Well, yeah, you could do that. <laughs> That'd be fair, right? I mean, I went there. Why One year you go there? there, and then and then the next year they come to you. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, the cost of recording out here in LA is probably a little steeper than Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Maybe maybe just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. They might not be happy about the cost. Yeah. yeah. You may have to. You may have to like put a studio in your house or something. I think you're right. Yeah. Which wouldn't work because all of our songs would have like dog barking and, <laughs> and twins, twin boys yelling at each other over every song. You you could find a way to incorporate that into the music. Maybe. 
Maybe. Just You're creative. You could find a way to do that. Sample the boys <laughs> screaming at each other and like call it a song. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Shut up. I didn't talk to you. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it Shut Up. You didn't touch me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you be quiet. Get out of my room. <laughs> You be quiet, get out of my room. You be quiet, get out of my room. No, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. I don't know. I think I think you got a potential hit there on your hands. <laughs> out of my room. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so a fan of yours actually sent me a question the other day that she wanted me to ask you because she couldn't watch the interview live. Um this is from Becca. She's uh, also known as Salem Sweetie Twelve on I Twitter. I know who she is? Okay, she said you might. Yeah, I know who she, she is. She said, uh, "What are your techniques for remembering your lines with all of the dialogue on days?" Oof. Uh, there's really no no technique. It, it's essentially it's hard. It's just hard work. Yeah. And and there's really no way around it. When you have to memorize that amount of material, you just have to bear down and do it over and over and over again. When I first started in soaps, it was really hard. It took me a couple hours to do one script. Yeah. I, I would say I've, I've cut that time down now to probably under a half an hour. I can, within 20 or 25 minutes, I can pretty much memorize an entire script. Yeah. And that's just, that's just, muscle memory your mind is just like any other muscle you got you work it enough it'll, it'll get stronger right and i've had the privilege of being on soaps now for almost 16 years so i better know how to do it by now <laughs> yeah. it's not like i'm talented or anything it's just if you do something long enough you'll be you should be good at it well and you know you've you've, you've been the character for a long enough period of time it probably makes that a little easier with the you memorization almost- you almost know, I almost know what Brady is going to say before it's written. Right. Yeah. You know, I, all, all, I just, if I get a, a line from a character, I don't even have to look at it. I'm, I'm pretty sure what he's going to say. Yeah. Of course, of course, Ron is, Ron, our new head writer, he's, he, he's got us guessing. He, he is doing things lately and breaking boundaries and, and weaving stories around that has us, have us all just, what? Like, it's, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. he's, he's his pen is a roller coaster. Yeah. You don't know where it's going. At <laughs> so I don't know. It's fun. It kind of, it reminds me of passions a little bit, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's loony. It's totally loony and it's fun. It's, it's yeah. good. It's good escapism. Kind of keeps it, you on your toes too, as an actor, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Cause some of this stuff, sometimes it's hard to sell. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, Brady is, Brady has his moments of dimness that I'm just, I, I don't know how how he could not know this or you know I I get frustrated at times but you got to you got to bear down and and portray that character the way he's written no matter yeah. how much you personally would want to not say what he's going to say or not do what he's going to do it's your job you got to do it you got to bring him to life I think a lot of actors struggle with that too cuz no one would ever do that well your character's doing it your character's doing it yeah yeah <laughs> suck yeah. it up this has nothing to do with you and everything <laughs> to do with that person on the page. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a, a question in the chat room from uh, Sarah Yu. She said, um, what can we expect to see Brady in the upcoming episodes? Will there be a Brady and Gabby? Hmm. Uh, well, I do have some upcoming uh, interactions with Gabby. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We are actually going to be in cahoots, and we have not shared a lot of screen time together. So it's 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 an interesting uh, relationship. Uh, Camilla, you know, she brings a very spicy character to the table and and very headstrong. And and Brady's in a pretty strong place himself. You know, he's he's embracing his title as CEO of Titan now, and he's he's a uh, he's he's strong right now. So the two of them come together with their heads, and they set out. To, uh, well, I'm not, I can't say what they do, but they have a common <laughs> goal. They have a common goal and they have common interests. So they put, they, they are, they team up. I'll, yeah. I'll leave it at that. They team up. Okay. 
Uh, well, I wanted to ask you before we go, um, I saw somewhere where you can do an impression of like a ping pong match. Can you oh, yeah. do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I can. You want to do it with me? Yeah. Okay. Like, right. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. <laughs> Put up your paddle. So I'll make the noises and we, you're going to, we're going to pant. Oh, okay. Okay. I gotcha. Okay. okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve the ball to you and you hit it back. All right. Okay. Hold on. I served, I served it in the net. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, God. I hit it over there. <laughs> That's my ping pong. I, is it the tongue? It's like you're throwing your voice, too. It's so, that is so wild. You know, what's really wild is my boys can do it, too. So it's like, like a I genetic just, like, thing. Somehow genetically got past to them. And that's how we find each other in stores like Costco, for instance, when they, they're lost. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and they'll go and they'll go do it back and then we'll find each other. Right. That's our way. When you have twin boys, you got to come up with something other than, hey, hey. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had to find something significantly, you know, interesting. That is wild. Like, it's not just the noise either. It's like I said, you, it's almost like you're throwing your voice. So it's like you can actually hear the ping pong ball moving. That is weird. That is a, that's probably the most unusual talent I've ever, ever heard of. I, I think I need to be on America's Got Talent. Uh, yeah, I think, so, or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe or maybe not. Something. <laughs> or yeah. something. Or like on a street corner with a hat. Like, <laughs> getting money. Right. Yeah, you could probably do that too. <laughs> probably right i don't know everyone's got their little thing gotta have yeah. a gimmick you gotta have a gimmick you gotta have a gimmick yeah it might, it might be something that will help you be remembered in the next time you go into an audition for something so right right so the next the next keep... big ping the next big ping pong movie that comes up <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i'm your guy Watch well that. you know they made a movie about dodgeball so it's not <laughs> That's true. Well, no, there's a, a Balls of Fury. Wasn't that about ping pong with Christopher Walken? I think so, yeah. That was a ping pong movie. Yeah, yeah. so it's not like beyond the realm of possibilities. No, no, it's going <laughs> to gonna happen. I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> okay, so you can find the album for Counterpoint by searching uh, Counterpoint in your head uh, on iTunes, Amazon, uh, CD Baby, Spotify, all of those things. And I actually have the link for CD Baby um, under this um, video oh, uh, thing. So people well, can just click on that and, and it'll take you right to it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's it. Unless there's something you want to add before we go. I, 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 I had a really good time. I really enjoy the fact that you, that you do this uh, and, and, and show interest and you keep, you keep our genre alive by, yeah. By holding conversations like this, and I thank you for your support in that aspect. You're, oh, you're we appreciate it. Thank, thank you, thank you for coming on, and thank you for uh, being so patient with all the technical difficulties that we had in the beginning. That's so. all on Paula. That's all on me. Girl. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm a doorknob when it comes to tech. Right? <laughs> yeah, I can barely plug in a vacuum cleaner, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to to uh, to chat with us a little bit. So, my pleasure. All right. Thank you. Bye. Awesome.